I just want to get it. They said, some of us are going to be righteous. Yeah, but you ain't enjoying what was right and forbid what is wrong. And everybody's going to get the punishment because of that. So it's very important for the believers to enjoy what is right and to forbid what is wrong and not to hang around those people. As one of our brothers used to say, uh, I'm not going to mention the countries uh, so that people we're not defense of our country. My brother said he was visiting one of the Muslim countries and all he could do for the whole trip was make dua. Oh Allah, just don't let that ocean <laughs> swallow me, this country, while I'm here. Because the sin sometimes are so much that you think the ocean got to come and clean this, clean this earth of the shirk and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The brother said all he can do is make dua, Oh Allah, before you destroy these Muslims, just let me get on a plane and get up out of here first. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. So don't think that you in the house with the brother who don't make salat in jama'ah. Don't think that the punishment might just not come down on you. And some of the brothers, they even come and tell me. Yeah, I try to tell a brother to come to the masjid. They in his house before the salat and after the salat. They in his house, they come, make the salat in jama'ah. Then they go back to the brother's house. They just kicking it. <laughs> come on, you going to the masjid? Nah, I ain't going to the masjid. Fitting the day or something. I don't like brother so-and-so. All right. You say, all right, well, me and brother so-and-so, I ain't got no problems. So I'm going to the masjid. Make salat, then go back to the same brother's house. What make, what make you realize that if the punishment came on that house, that it wouldn't get you when you was there? And really, we need to stop feeling so safe from the punishment of Allah and to begin to hang around those Muslims who are trying to practice this deen of al-Islam. Inshallah ta'ala. No. Yes. <laughs> no, it seemed like he was saying something. No, no. no. No, no. no, you don't even have to go that far. Those Sahabas who held fast to their house, where was their house at? No, and you take all of the no, you take all of the narrations, the hadith, and the other narrations that when things get so thick, to a person just has to go out in the wilderness is just him and the sheep. No. I can I'm not quoting the exact me, the exact wording, but the meaning is in some of these narrations that, uh, and you can find them in the books of Fitna by Bukhari and Muslim, on some of the narrations where the people going to leave the people and go out to the wilderness, or as in one of the narrations until uh, he leaves all of the groups and goes out and eats on the barks of the trees or the roots, the trunk roots of the trees or whatever until death overtakes him and he's in that state. These people had uh, removed themselves from the society. These are the people who held fast to the house. They was out in the middle of nowhere. Or, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, if the evil ruler of the Muslims was going to kill you, you can imagine somebody making, making salat in this house. Because in those days, they was really cutting off heads. So you just come to the masjid, just cut your head off. Oh, you can imagine somebody like that, when fitna get that serious, you stand in the house. This fitna of today is, the brother himself causes the fitna. <laughs> then he said, I don't want to come to the masjid because it's a fitna. Like we give the example of the brother, since it was public. He was here, he told everybody that, uh, I don't know what he said, the sunnah is above the Quran. The sunnah was revealed first. And then the Quran was revealed second. All right, everybody said, what? <laughs> All right, that was just the start of some of the fitna that had come from him. Then he had a whole bunch of other things. He said, the statements of the Salaf al-Salih is revelation. Who said the statements of the companions is revelation? 
And what kind of revelation is Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu statement the Prophet didn't die, whoever said he's dead, I'll cut his head off. What kind of revelation is that? Not to say anything against Omar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, but just to show the example as we love our Sahaba and we don't mention their bad points of speaking against them, but just to show that the statements of the Sahaba is in revelation. How are you going to say the statements of the Tabi'un and the Tabi Tabi'in and the Ulama of Islam is revelation from Allah compulsory to follow? And this is why we always uh, clarify with our statement and the understanding and the practice of our Salaf al Salah, meaning their understanding of revelation, which is the Quran and the Sunnah, and their practice of revelation, which is Quran and the Sunnah. Not that what they have themselves is revelation from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and He told us that, uh, or as the fitna first started even before that, He told a brother, "You wrong. Beat the brother down almost right here in the musalla in front of my face in one of the classes. How in the world are you gonna tell a, a kafir wa alikum? What you think you doing? Where you get that from? You got a hadith? What kind of sunnah you on? Telling a kafir wa alikum." I couldn't even believe the brother was so hard like that right in front of the class, in front of everybody. The brother who said why Lakeham was so hurt, he didn't even say nothing. Is he here with us? And you can't even imagine the brother not saying nothing because he's so vocal in the message. He's always standing up saying something. Well, I know you don't want to hear what I got to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. And he just say it. But that day, the brother was so hard on him, he didn't even say nothing. I told him, I know why the brother said it. And he don't know why he said it. I know why he said it. From the hadith of Al-Bukhari, Muslim, when the disbelievers say the salams to you, respond, wa alaykum, and to you the same. And the brother, he started going, he was right here going off. Abu Muslim, I thought you said you were Salafi. What happened to all of these texts from the Quran and the Sunnah? He was going on like this. Boom, 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 boom. Quoting supposedly. Everybody looked at me like, Shit, we're all the man. <laughs> What's up with all of that? I was trying to keep the fitna down as I knew the brother was speaking from his own desires and he didn't know what in the world he was talking about. I just let him get that off to try to let the fitna down and then I pulled him into the library on the side see if you can find your foolishness in those books you were mentioning so he mentioned one of the books that he thought people don't have Adab al-Mufred by Imam al-Bukhari a book on manners and etiquette by Imam al-Bukhari uh, he thought no you don't have it I was happy that alhamdulillah we had it and read it and studied it in the past I said, nah, everybody know this book. We got the book and the explanation. Nah, Albani got a Sahih version. He said, even in the explanation, the person tells you what's authentic and what's not. At any rate, here it is, show me. He flipping through it five minutes. I knew it was in here somewhere. I said, why don't you try it right there? They go to chapter. Ah, here it is. Then he read all of the hadith. Oops, I made a mistake. I said, no problem. Everybody make mistakes. Just come tell everybody that you was making a fool of yourself like that. When it came time to tell everybody, he act like it was a difference of an opinion and an issue. Where he ain't take nothing back until we had to quote the tafsir of the ayat, فَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٌ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُتُوهَا When you've been greeted with a greeting, then greet with one similar to it or one that is better to show that the ulama of Islam show that this is referring to the Muslims this ayah not to the disbelievers and then we had explained and everything at any rate the brother just was going on and on and on and he came and told us that he was the most knowledgeable man in America on Islam in every subject Arabic, Quran Tafsir, Hadith stuff I said uh, I remember I told the brother you sure? He said, yeah. I said, can I just write that quote down? He let me write it down. He dictated it to me. I wrote it down. And 
Then he told the people publicly too, he said, he's the most knowledgeable person. We asked him, how do you know you're the most knowledgeable person in this now? Because I know you and your limited knowledge, and I know more than you. I know Jamal Adin and his limited knowledge, and I know more than him. And he started listening to people, American brothers, and he said, see, I know all what y'all got, because y'all have teeth and books and stuff, and I know more than all of y'all. At any rate, what is a bigger fitna than him? He went and said the ulama told him not to come to the masjid because there might uh, there might be fit there's fitna at the masjid. Wallah, he ain't been no more fitna since he left. <laughs> no. And the people remember when he when he came, the fitna came with him, and we had told him go take your fitna back to where you were. You've been giving the dawah to the truth for 13 years in your area and it ain't nothing but you and the two brothers who with that stuff I right, go back there but the people were coming here trying to take advantage opportunity they said ah oh, nice crowd here let me just try to run my game because I see that given 13 years on the so called truth where I live wasn't doing no good and it's hundreds and thousands of Muslims in that area and he came here and caused a fitna. So, alhamdulillah, we got rid of that fitna. And the fitna is trying to sneak in some other places. And one of the brothers, alhamdulillah, called us and said, You know so-and-so? I thought we heard something about him before. I said, No, that's the most knowledgeable man in America on this land. <laughs> they said, Oh, we know how to handle him. Wala hawla wala quwata illa billah. Yes, sir. I really don't have any more to say other than what the ulama said. And I'm the last person to debate a person over how he personally feels his circumstances are. And uh, a person knows if he's justified or unjustified, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, and that's between him and whatever. I don't argue with the people, and uh, I told us that sometimes we have to be careful. And uh, we're mentioning this point quite often in the month of Ramadan. Somebody says he's sick. Ah, you look perfectly healthy to me, Akhi. Nobody don't know if if he's sick or not. And uh, we are giving the example. Could you see if somebody got a headache? Maybe he can't see his headache. He can't even see it. But he sure feel it. And nobody knows somebody's case better than him. And his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his Lord is going to hold him accountable for it. So this is in general. And for the brothers in the prison too. The same thing goes for them. And we mentioned oftentimes that really their circumstances aren't new to Islam. And uh, I think we're even going to try to have, uh, one of the brothers said we're going to have uh, a series of talks, inshallah, to some of the brothers incarcerated on the story of Yusuf, alayhi salatu salam, while he was incarcerated. Now, I know, yes. Yes, there are, there are books. In, uh, I saw the, what's that called? The Life of the Companions or something. Uh, somebody has it. Uh, what's the name of that book? It was like the series. Huh? Huh? Portraits of the Companions. That's what it's called. It's like three small books or something. That's quite a bit. Yeah, maybe you can try that. And what would you say? Yeah. Now, so they have some of them translated into English. In Arabic, they have a lot. Yeah. So I don't know how much they've translated. She might just want to ask in the bookstore. I know that in some places they have it. Uh, the Life of Omar or something like that. Or the Rightly Guide of Khalifas or something like that. Might just got to shop around a little bit. No. A lot of the Meaning the Juma is more compulsory than the Fasala. Uh, He's going to add to it. 
important the family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, the one who commands the men to support their family. And this is a characteristic of the real men. They support their family. And there's a whole bunch of men who don't support their family. But you can't support your family by the haram and call yourself supporting the family. Not making salat and jama'ah, not making the jumu'ah and the masjid. And you call that support of your family. What support of your family are you going to give them no worship of Allah with? And uh, I said one time that I had hoped that we would cover this book on the jama'ah, making salat and the jama'ah and the masjid by Shaykh al-Islam ibn And uh, I found a little difficulty in trying to summarize that book up. But uh, people just got to make salat in the masjid. Really, the people, when they go for a job, they have to put, you put on your application certain things, right? All right one of the things is, I'm going to Salat. <laughs> well, I don't have any problem. And <clears throat> really, a lot of times, people don't have problems with nothing. I took a job. They took me just like I am right now. <laughs> they asked me in an interview, what you, what you got, what you call that? <laughs> A kameez or something? I say, yeah, that's the Muslim dress. All right. You going to wear that if you get the job? Yep. <laughs> I mean, what you want to uh, Y'all got prayer or something like yeah, You just explain everything to, to whoever is hiring you. Yeah, if I get the job, I'm going to do this. All right. And you make your arrangement ahead of time. And I'm aware that some people don't have, uh, depending on what you have to offer when you get a job, that it might be difficult if they just tell you no. But really, once the Muslims start standing on Islam, they don't say nothing. They don't say nothing. In the beginning, it might be hard. I remember when I first accepted Islam, I used to substitute teach. And I uh, accepted Islam. I started wearing a kufi. And uh, I remember one of the principals. You ain't going to have that in here. This, that, he started going off with me. I was in New Brunswick. In the beginning, it was cool. After a while, all the children start coming around. Man, like, a coop just in New Brunswick, they ain't, like, seen it before. So they was just like, man, what is, what you into? You a 5 percenter? Like, what's that? It's now. So really, like, in, in the hallways and stuff like that, used to be like a little crowd. Then the principal, he heard it, heard about it, he called me in. So I told him, you know what, Mr. Kaffer? You don't hire me, and you don't fire me, and you don't decide if I come to your school or not, so don't insult me no more. You got that? He was an older black man, real respected principal of the school and all of that. But I wonder how he felt after that. Oh, nobody's gonna talk to me like this. Uh, 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 uh. I said, if you want to, if you really want me to shut you up, why don't you just let me tell you that we'll make a case out of this. We'll make a religious case out of this and see how you put up in court. I told him I'm a nobody. I'm ain't nothing but a college student. I don't have no background, no nothing going for me. <laughs> And I ain't got nothing to lose. You ready to put all your things on the table for that? What he had to say after that? Just burning up in his own hatred. Really, this dean is the truth, but when more people stand up for it, then it becomes, it's a whole lot of places. They don't have no problem with brothers wearing thobes to work, brothers wearing kufis to work, brothers making salat. Even like one of the brothers was telling me just yesterday, and I forgot the company. Remember that company, honey? So they established a five salat, oh, in the hospital or something. He said uh, Islam just got so strong, it's just kicked the cafeteria business, shut the cafeteria business down, it's made that a musallah. Make y'all five salat in Jumaah there. 
Islam. They told the Christians, y'all can do your thing there too. <laughs> but what that look like once a week for the Christians on Sunday and the Muslims five times a day in Jumu'ah? And even some of the corporations after a while when the Muslims get strong, like one of the brothers was telling me in one of the AT&Ts, they has give the Muslims a room for Jumu'ah. There are so many Muslims in AT&T, they just give them a room for Jumu'ah. And some of the other hospitals and stuff like that. And after a while, they just get forced. They just say, Islam is just strong. Islam is just above us. And we just going to get paid, so it don't make a difference. Let them practice Islam, and we still going to make our money. Because it don't really stop the people from making money. You practice in Islam necessarily. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, but the people got to work something out ahead of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, we ain't even doing That's what you're talking about. Yes. Pertaining to? What I was asking is uh, uh, going, to, like, going to the bathroom the same thing as uh, passing gas. Uh, 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 them to explain it to you, inshallah. Ask those people to explain it to you. Those people who told you all that stuff. You said the people told you this, the people told you that. All right, let them explain to you what they told you. We have policies here for marriage, and we had a whole talk on it because of statements like yours. And we explained to the people what's our policies on marriage here. And uh, if you were in accordance to what our policies were, we'd marry you. We ain't had nothing against nobody. The brother, he made the tape available, inshallah. It was quite a few things that we can't mention the whole lecture right now. And uh, you have it. And other than that, we don't stop nobody from getting married. Except the people that we stop from getting married. By our statement, go someplace else and get married because of the shadiness and they circumstances. And we not wrong in nobody, but the people wrong themselves. If you straight, we're married. And if you ain't, we ain't. You straight? No, I'm saying. You straight? Yeah. Inshallah, we're married. We're just going to double check. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha la anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.